with all the legal trouble the ACC is dealing with right now, with lawsuits between them and Clemson, lawsuits between them and Florida State, it looks like the conference could be in peril. It's very possible they could be in peril and they could lose members. Where does that leave the Miami Hurricanes? Is it possible that the Miami Hurricanes may actually end up in the Big 12? And if so, if the Big 12 has a chance to get them, should they and would they be a fit? We're going to talk about all of that, and we're going to do that right after this word. My sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up? Come on in, make yourself comfortable, bail yourself up to the bar, and let me pour you out another shot of top-shelf college football content on tap at, to, at Coos's Corner today. We are talking about conference realignment again. We're talking about the turmoil in the ACC, but today the focus is on the Miami Hurricanes. Now, if you'd have said, if you'd have asked me a couple of weeks ago if I thought there was any chance at all the Miami could end up in the Big 12, I would have told you essentially that you're full of it. There's no way in this world Miami could end up in the Big 12. Now, all of a sudden, because remember, let's go back a bit before I get into my next point. Let's go back a bit to the Magnificent Seven. Last summer, we heard about the ACC meetings and how there was this Magnificent Seven. It was seven schools who had apparently met or at least tried to find ways out of the ACC grant of rights. Well, Miami was one of those seven schools. And there's been a lot of talk that Miami, you know, could end up going to the Big Ten with Florida State. There's been that out there. There's been talk that Miami could go to the SEC, all of that. Miami's, a, you know, they're an AAU school, so that makes them a fit for the Big Ten potentially. There's been a lot of talk about Miami being one of the top four candidates to get out of the ACC and into one of the Power Two conferences. Well, all of a sudden, last week, Miami's AD comes out in a radio interview and and makes it sound like he's locked in and is being loyal to the ACC. Now, there was a lot of people talking about this. There were some articles written on it. But the one I want to focus on today is one that was written by Pete Mundo over at Heartland College Sports. Most of you, if you follow my channel, you probably follow Heartland College Sports because he covers the Big 12 Conference. And I'm going to do a quick screen share here uh, and read part of this article to you, and then we'll talk about it. I'll give you my thoughts. And then we'll look at a spreadsheet that I put together that will show whether or not Miami is a fit in the Big 12 if there's a chance they could land there. All right, here we go. Here's the article. I'm, I'm not, Again, I'm not reading the whole article, but this is the part I want to focus on. It says, so where does all this leave Miami? Well, the Miami athletic director recently told a Miami radio station, quote, we are incredibly solid with the ACC. It's a great conference and provides great structure and certainly access to the college football playoff. We look at our circumstance here with a very orange and green set of glasses and ask, are we in? Are we in a good spot and growing our football program? We've invested in it. We've brought Mario here, and he's establishing an incredible foundation. What's the opportunity for us here with the things under our control to move this thing forward? The ACC is still one of the Power Four conferences that's a part of the college football playoff, end quote. But this is really what's in the best – but is this really what's in the best interest of Miami to stay and back the ACC, especially if the two perceived powerhouses leave? Recently, Inside the U's, David Lake told 24-7 Sports, quote, Miami's leadership needs a kick in the pants, frankly, and unless they change their approach, I could foresee the Big 12 being a landing spot. Hopefully, Athletic Director Dan Radakovich and the Miami leadership start being proactive and make sure they have a seat at the table in the game of musical chairs for the migration to the, quote, Big 2 sooner rather than later, end quote. Now, basically what this what David Lake from inside the U is saying here is if Miami doesn't get their crap together and 
align themselves to where they can get into the power two. If, if they don't stop supporting the ACC and stop, you know, cozying up to the ACC, they're going to get stuck in the ACC. Or if the ACC collapses, they're going to be forced to go to the Big 12. That's kind of the way I interpreted Lake's comments. Lake added, back to the article, Lake added, this is a big game of musical chairs, and the question for Miami is, how many spots in the Big 2 remain? Amongst ACC programs, Florida State and Clemson are the two biggest brands, and they are being the most aggressive. They will likely eat first. Where does Miami stand in the pecking order amongst the remaining schools? Miami is banking on a winning 2024 season, translating to making themselves more desirable to the Big Two conferences. Miami certainly hasn't been aggressive enough at this point to make any definitive pr- prediction. End quote. Now, understandably, Miami would prefer the Big Ten or SEC, just based purely on money. However, those two conferences have not expressed a desire to expand right now. But the Big 12 would love to grow its foothold in the Sunshine State. The Big 12 already has UCF in Orlando, and adding a brand like Miami would be enormous for the league and would also be right up the alley of Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark. Yormark would love the flash and potential of a downtrodden brand that has tremendous potential in South Florida. But for now, we wait and see what happens with the Florida State and Clemson lawsuit. That will be the next domino to fall to see if there's any poaching for the Big 12 or anyone else to do. So, those were the comments in the Heartland Heartland of College Sports article by Pete Mundo and the quotes in there from David Lake over at Inside the U. He thinks that it's actually possible for Miami to land in the Big 12 because they may not be aggressive enough in trying to get out of the ACC to land in the Power 2. So it got me thinking. Number one, as a, someone who follows the Big 12, covers the Big 12, and especially covers my favorite team, the West Virginia Mountaineers, would I want Miami in the league, and would they be a good fit in the league? So I put, put together one of my spreadsheets that, that I like to do from time to time to take a look at the, met, the metrics the, the, the realignment metrics, the five realignment metrics of rivalries. Do they have any rivalries in the league? Do they fit geographically? Do they fit from an athletic performance standpoint? What is their brand upside? And do they fit from an academics standpoint? So let's pull up the spreadsheet and we'll talk about all that. ACC, speaks, ACC expansion candidates versus Big 12. Let's look at Miami. Blue blood ranking. Miami has a blue blood ranking of 19, which is well above the Big 12 median of 50. So if you want to look at athletic performance, this, this looks at strictly a football perspective, they definitely fit. They would be the highest blue blood ranking in the conference by far. Miami has won multiple national titles over the course of their program's history. Uh, at one time, they were the hottest brand in college football, and I still think they're a valuable brand today. They have fallen off some, but they're still a valuable brand, and they have a strong athletic performance. And even, heck, if you look at basketball, they've been good in basketball the last few years. I mean, they just made a Final Four, what, a year ago? So they do have a strong uh, – they do fit from an athletic performance perspective. Academic ranking in U.S. News, this is the academic piece. They rank 67th among national universities for the 2024 ranking. Big 12 median is 120. So again, they would far and they would far exceed the Big 12 median at 67. Now, when you look at brand upside, there are a lot of things you can look at from brand upside. But the one thing I looked at for the sake of this video, because it's kind of easy to put a number two, is TV viewership. The 2023 TV rankings, Miami was in the top 25 in the country in TV viewership with an average weekly viewership of 2.65 million. The Big 12 median, 1.31 million. If you include all 14 schools, or I'm sorry, all 12 schools, not counting Oklahoma and Texas, if you take out the G5 additions of Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF, it's actually 1.37 million per week on average for the Big 12. But either way, Miami far exceeds the average TV viewership, or I'm sorry, the median TV viewership of the Big 12. Now, when you look at geographic fit, 
I'm skipping rivalries. I'm going to come to that in a minute. But when you look at geographic fit, they they were fit there too because they would be in the state of Florida. It would give the Big 12 another good brand in the East Coast, give them a good brand in the state of Florida, which is a recruiting hotbed. And it gives a travel partner to UCF in non-revenue sports if needed. I think it would. you also have the potential there to form a rivalry, which segues into the rivalry metric. Is there a current rival of Miami in the conference? Technically, no. Now, you could say that West Virginia is a rival because of their old Big East days, but technically there's not a rivalry, but I, I could foresee a rivalry forming between Miami and UCF. Now, it will take some time because where UCF is just now coming up from a group of being in a group of five conference, they're going to have to earn their respect as a power five school, in my opinion, and earn that earned being considered a rival by some of these more, more well-known brands, some of these bigger brands, especially a brand like Miami, who let's face it, probably looks at themselves a lot higher than those of us look at them from the outside. But now when you go to the website, no rivalry.com, which I'm going to pull up right now, you will see that Miami's primary rivals are Florida state and Florida. Now, Neither one of those are coming to the are in the Big 12, and neither are likely coming. Now, there are some out there who think Florida State could end up in the Big 12. I'm not one of those. But nonetheless, no, I guess there is a long shot that it could happen, but nonetheless, those are two biggest rivals. Other rivals are Florida International, who likely won't end up in the Big 12 anytime soon, and Virginia Tech, which is I'll get to in just a minute. When you go down here and look at the rivalry points, obviously the dark green is how Miami fans view Florida State. They view Florida State as their biggest rival. They do not view Florida International as a rival, although Florida International views Miami as a rival. Next, also obviously they view Florida as a big rival. Interestingly enough, Miami fans view Notre Dame as a pretty big rival, although Notre Dame doesn't reciprocate. Notre Dame fans don't reciprocate. Now, when you look at the Virginia Tech piece, and remember, we've talked about Virginia Tech on this channel before potentially coming into the Big 12, and if they would be a fit, I think they'd be a great fit, by the way. And I'll leave a link to that video at the end. Uh, My friend Wild Ute, who's also part of the College Football Mafia family, he was on there with me talking about Virginia Tech. Miami views Virginia Tech as a rival somewhat, but interestingly enough, Virginia Tech views Miami as an even bigger rival. 20.6 on the scale of rivalry points on a scale of 0 to 100. So if you could get Virginia Tech and Miami, you could have a nice rivalry there. Again, you've got two teams from their old Big East days. You add West Virginia to that mix. You have two other teams or another team that used to be with Miami in the Big East. I think you have the makings of a couple decent rivalries there. Even though they haven't been played in a long time, I think you would have the opportunity for Miami and West Virginia, once again, to form a rivalry. I know the older West Virginia fans out there would appreciate having that game back on the schedule, and I would assume uh, my older Miami fans may as well. If you're a Miami fan watching this, let me know in the comment section, would you like to see Miami in the same conference as West Virginia or not? Now, do I think Miami ends up in the Big 12 conference? I do not. I do not think this is a likely scenario. Uh, I see it as a very, 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 very highly unlikely scenario, actually. Uh, if, uh, not quite one in a million. If you want to say one in a thousand, maybe. I think the most likely scenario for Miami is I, a, either the ACC staying together. They may lose Florida State and Clemson, maybe even North Carolina, but Miami may stay. Or Miami may end up with a home in the Big Ten. I think if they leave the ACC, their home will be in the Big Ten because they are an AAU university. They do get the Big Ten into Florida, and they give you a solid brand with a large TV network. We haven't even talked about the size of the of the TV market. Miami gives you one of the largest TV markets in the country if you're the Big 12 or the Big Ten or anybody else for that matter. Now, if I'm Brett Ewan Mark in the Big 12 and I have a chance to get Miami, I am absolutely taking them. Yes, you can say they don't have a uh, – a stadium on their campus. I don't care about that right now. When you're a, when you have a chance to grab nab nab grab whatever word you want to use, go grab a brand like a Miami who has 19th on the Blue Blood Robbery metric from from Winsipedia, top 20 brand according to Winsipedia in, in athletic performance at least. 
you got the history there with Miami. They're they're to me, they're on the upswing right now. Mario Cristobal's kind of making it cool to be a Miami Hurricane again. They're flashy again, like they used to be. Now they have it hasn't quite yet made its way onto the field. They did have a better year last year. They've yet to win a conference title in the last few years. Matter of fact, it's been a long time, but I do think they're on the rise and they're going to be competitive again in the ACC and on the national scene. I think Mario Cristobal has them headed in, in that direction. They have a very large NIL backing. We've all read about all the NIL backing that they have from some of their larger donors. The names have escaped me right now, but you know the guy I'm talking about primarily. So, again, if you're the Big 12 and you have a chance to grab Miami, you grab them. But I do think it's very unlikely. The only way I see Miami getting into the Big 12 is if it's its last resort. If the ACC totally collapses and they can't get in the Big 10 or the SEC, maybe they go join the Big 12 and the Big 12 is able to increase their TV revenue to make it worth their while. To me, that's the only way it makes any sense, but I don't see it as a likely scenario. But do you think it's likely? Do you think it's likely that Miami lands in the Big 12? I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Right now, I want to also remind you that you can grab yourself some Coos's Corner merch by going to the Coos's Corner merch store. There's a link to that in the description box. Also, you can support your favorite student athletes and support my show by getting yourself some on it NIL trading cards. The link is in the description box. I will make a small commission from the sale if you use the link. And your favorite student athletes will make 60% of the profits from the sale. Again, on it NIL trading cards. It's March Madness going on right now. They have basketball available. They also have football available. We know the transfer portal is getting ready to open back up again for college football players. If you want to help your school retain their players by paying them NIL money, this is the way you can do it. On it NIL trading cards. Also, again, it supports what I'm doing here at Coos's Corner and helps me keep the lights on. If you want to watch the video I did with Wild Ute where we talked about Virginia Tech, you can check it out right here. I appreciate you tuning into this video. Have a top shelf day and Q Country Roads.